Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Gamer Tentacom video. Let us discuss the Wii U's specifications. Now, this comes to us from a recent address by Nintendo's Senior Managing Director. His name is Genyo Takeda. Hopefully, I've pronounced that correctly. I'll read it out to you guys. G-E-N-Y-O Takeda T-A-K-E E D A. Anyway, he was speaking with uh, investors on, and I quote, Nintendo tries not to emphasize the raw technical specifications, and instead they prefer to place the focus on how to, we can use technology to amplify the value of our entertainment offerings. And he also further added, whether a machine is powerful or not only has meaning in the context of whether that can express itself in terms of gameplay to the customers. I apologize for not answering your questions directly, but my personal belief is that explanation of such natures have little relevance to consumers. Rather than thinking differently between hardware and software, I would like to continue to use technology to, in order to amplify the overall entertainment value in some ways that are easy to understand for our consumers and that technology we should investigate more and more differently from the past. It's not just computational power of a computer that is important, but the way that technology can connect and interact. Um, I hope that to communicate the value of Wii U hardware, the concrete example of cons consumers can feel, oh, so that, so this is it. End quote. Well, if it makes them feel any better, oh, so this is it. It's pretty much what people are actually saying already about the Wii U. In other words, it lacks power. Now, I know that sounds like a bit of a snide remark, and I don't mean it to be, but <laughs> I've got some real problems with this. Now, the first is that, well, you're not an insular market. Now, it's well and good to say that I don't care about the specifications of the machine. Like, for example, we can argue all day long what's more powerful out of the PS4 and Xbox One. I'm not going to get into the debate in here. But let's even assume that the PS4 is having a lead of about 40% in terms of raw technical specifications. The Xbox One can still run the games, albeit at a lower resolution, fine. It can, you know, have a slightly lower resolution maybe have a few less graphical effects. The bottom line is the game can easily run. That's not the case with the Wii U. It's missing a lot of memory. It's lo missing a lot of the GPU performance. And so, yes, you know, if the system was out there alone, if that's all it was, if it was like the Wii U and the PC, PC owners had their games, the Wii U owners had their games, great. But in reality... When a company, for example, Ubisoft, when a company um, like Capcom, you know, they want to make a game, they want to make sure that it runs no fuss on as many platforms as possible. This is one of the reasons that Sony, for example, decided to go with x86, as well as Microsoft. They wanted it to be easy for the porting process. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not just about the hardware specifications. If anything, the PlayStation 2 decimating the original Xbox and the GameCube in terms of sales figures, despite being considerably less powerful, and even Nintendo's own Game Boy, which was considerably less powerful than, for example, the Game Gear, are great examples of this. The issue is that, you know, you've got to make people want the, the games as much as possible, and whether you like it or not, Sure, a lot of the market may not care about the graphics so much, but there's a lot of gamers, particularly less hardcore, that really, they do want it to look as shiny as possible. And it's really difficult to sell a system based entirely on interacting with a game, especially as you can pretty much emulate a lot of that on the other consoles. Anyway, the other issue that I think a lot of people had with the system um, first of all, there was poor communication with Nintendo, uh, from Nintendo, shall I say, regarding the system. There was a lot of confusion there, you know, what, what's really, what is the Wii U? Is it an addition to the Wii? Is it an add-on? And, okay, you, you may scoff at that if you're informed with gaming, but if you're not, if you're a parent, if you're someone who maybe doesn't really know that much about gaming, you probably wouldn't know that. And so... I think Nintendo made a bit of a, a poor choice there. The other problem 
in my personal opinion, was that they charged simply too much for the system. It was just, it's just too expensive when it was first launched, considering the specifications of it. It's pretty much underpowered. Uh, I don't mean that, you know, to upset anyone who's got the system, but it's just true. It's just, it's actually, from what I'm reading, from I'm not certainly an expert in the Wii U specifications as much as I am like the PS4 and Xbox One, but from what I have read, it's slightly better in some respects than the Xbox 360 slash PS3, specifically in terms of the RAM, but it has major GPU problems and the CPU is apparently quite difficult to utilize as well. So even, let's even go as far as to say that it's roughly the same potential as the previous generation Xbox 360 and PS3 it's considerably weaker than the next generation and you're charging a lot of money for it and ultimately a lot of people do associate how much money they're coughing up with what the machine can do and this is another problem that Microsoft are having slightly less but I've heard exactly the same types of arguments why am I coughing up you know X for the Xbox one when the PS4 uh, is Y and it's cheaper. It's uh, I'm just using X and Y because obviously it depends on your currency. But still, it, it's just something that people really need to feel comfortable paying that amount of money. And, my, and Nintendo, as you know, are in this really chicken and egg situation right now because they can't just tell people to buy a Wii U. They could advertise, but the fact of the matter is there's not enough games out for it. But for games developers to, and publishers to take a risk on the system, there needs to be more people that own it. So you've got that chicken and egg situation. I, I honestly believe the hardware specifications are a big part of that. They probably would have been more willing... Uh, I'm talking about cross-development here. They probably would have been more willing to have actually tried putting more games on the system if it wasn't such a pain in the butt to actually do so. In other words, if it was using a more familiar x86 type of architecture. So anyway, uh, as I said, this isn't like a snipe at Nintendo. Um, Sony themselves have said that if Nintendo were to go under... And I don't think it's getting to that situation. But it's certainly not good for them. They're not in like a happy-go-lucky situation. But they're certainly not in danger of going under. But even even Sony have said that it would be really bad for the gaming industry. It really would. Um, but I think, and I've said this all along, Nintendo are like their own worst enemies. They do a lot of stuff right... But then they also do stuff wrong, and I think in some ways they're really out of touch with a lot of gamers. And I, I don't really know what it's like in Japan in terms of like the general consensus there, but I know that you know their philosophies there are very different. But even so, the PlayStation 4 is extremely eagerly anticipated there. And, okay, there are some really big titles on the Wii U that are going to be released. The bottom line is, though, from the perspective of... Consumers, we want to feel that there's value in the products we're purchasing. And I feel, as I said, that the system just wasn't powerful enough on release. I feel that it should have maybe have been delayed a little bit more so that a little bit longer and maybe with one or two really big Mario title, a uh, Mario or something else to really be a system seller. And I, or, conversely, just be cheaper. So either be the same price. And I know what people are going to argue, but it's got the gamepad and stuff. Well... That's nice, but for someone like myself, I don't care about it. And this is exactly the same thing as I've said about the the you know PlayStation I, the same thing I've said about Connect. I just don't want those technologies. It, I mean, I've heard that the the pad uh, for the Wii U it can be cool on certain games. It can be, it can add something, but at the same time, for a lot of people, it's just not something they're interested in. And well, I guess we're just going to have to see. Anyway, this is turning into a bit of a rambly video, so I'm going to call it now. That's the problem when you're uh, tired and recording. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.